Hearts of Iron 4 is an incredibly complex World War II simulation that will require hundreds of hours to master, both in-game and poring over wiki articles that read like an economics textbook. But the unusually striking look and clean interface complement a brilliant payoff for those willing to put in the time to learn. The world map is made up of over 11,000 unique provinces, sea regions, and air zones. That's roughly 250 times as many as a risk board, and it really feels like a board gamer's dream representation of Earth during the Second World War. Climates, terrain, the day-night cycle, weather patterns, and supply lines are simulated and animated down to the individual province, and all have noticeable effects on movement and combat. This level of detail rarely ceased to amaze me. The underlying conflict in Hearts of Iron 4 is an innovative and stimulating challenge that puts logistics and control of resources at the fore. I enjoyed iterating on how to set up my civilian sector and balance my manpower needs between the military and the factory floor as much as I did watching the sparks fly. The strong effects of politics made a prominent industrialist in my government cabinet worth far more to me in the big picture than a hotshot ace pilot or brilliant general. Things like that lend a sense of nuance to the whole affair. This became a double-edged sword the more I played, however. When you're expected to manage potentially millions of men in hundreds of factories involved in dozens of battles all around the globe, the tactically brilliant actions of Able Company or the Desert Rats get lost in the mix. Individual heroism goes unheard of in the blandness of statistically calculated warfare. Feedback about the performance of individual companies is a rare luxury and Hearts of Iron 4's interface makes it hard to track specific data after the fact about your new rocket artillery's contribution to the battle. If the sandstorm severely affected your tanks, or when and how your crafty general outmaneuvered the enemy commander. All things that are happening, but remain largely invisible, especially if you're not there to witness them in the moment. This leads to a policy of throwing army templates against a wall made of the enemy and sticking to the ones that made the biggest hole without ever fully comprehending the underlying mechanics. Of course, the lack of small-scale detail never left me feeling bored. There are plenty of levers to pull to steer the big picture stuff in any direction you want, including toward hugely ahistorical options. Politically aggressive Germany that never fires a shot? Fascist America invading Canada? Hirohito deposed by the Soviet-aligned People's Republic of Japan? All are very achievable possibilities if you seek to tell a different story than that of the World War II we all know and love. Regardless of the path you choose, however, it's likely as not to end with a stuttering stumble to the finish. Almost every campaign I played past 1944 or so bogged down my beefy Core i7-4770K, with the complex AI orders being issued from Normandy to Nanjing making the last push towards victory or desperate defense a slightly vexing affair. Hearts of Iron 4 is a strong contender for the title of Ultimate Armchair General game. The biggest problems I can point to are almost all performance related, putting a slow, frustrating finale on what is otherwise an ingeniously detailed strategic simulation of just about every aspect of 20th century global warfare. I long for a way to extract more meaningful, personal stories and tactical feedback out of the hundreds of battles, but rarely did I ever feel like I was lacking for some weighty decision to make or interesting puzzle to put my mind to. This one's well worth the extensive time investment required to learn how to manipulate its myriad moving parts into a well-oiled engine of war. For more on Hearts of Iron 4, stick with IGN.